Greetings and salutations, internet friends, and welcome back to another episode of the First Time Film Club. My name is Emily, your titular wink, first timer. This is Matthew, my husband, Cinema Sherpa, and viewer submitted title, Cinema Zaddy. <laughs> Like it. Oh, that one was submitted by <laughs> Count Fosco Likes Mice. You guys and your username. This is wild. Uh, thank you so much for that. You too can submit titles for Matthew by dropping them in the comments using hashtag title. Makes it easier for me to find. And of course, we have Pippin. He's taking a bath. <laughs> Um, he will probably also be napping eventually. Sometimes he naps up here, sometimes he naps on the floor. So if he disappears, that's where he went. For those of you joining us for the first time, hello. What we're doing here is watching our way through a very long list of movies that typically I've never seen, but that Matthew has. I do know that today is one of our Just Some Superfan Patreon picks. Mm -hmm. Matthew, what is the movie we're watching? Today we are watching the 1992 comedy, My Cousin Vinny. And as per usual, I give you the year, genre, and title. You go on whatever you already know. We watch the movie and review it. So, what do you know about my cousin Vinny? Joe Pesci. That's it? Yep. Okay. The end. <laughs> I guess that's enough. <laughs> that's all you need to know. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I'm all right. <laughs> uh, the only other thing to know for first time viewers is you may see my phone in my hand at some point during the movie. That's because I'm taking notes on things to talk about afterwards. Now, that being said, Ready to watch. Joe Pesci. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is Ralph Macchio. Oh, look at him. Marissa Tomei. I know that name, too. Mm-hmm. Alabama. Oh, Lord. Y'all don't want to go down there. We should get tuna. Please, no more tuna, okay? Mm -hmm. Not protein. We need protein. Beans are protein. Beans make you fart. We got a convertible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting it for myself. Oh boy. Oh no. Good old slush puppy. Burrito and one large slush. Um, where's the rest of it? One dollar and sixty-seven cents. Can you fill this up? Get out the way, chickens. Oh lord, he didn't pay for that tuna, did he? Look, I forgot to pay for this. You could have gotten caught. What if somebody saw? The laws are medieval down here. You know what the minimum age for execution is in Alabama? What, 16? 10. <laughs> the sad thing is, he's probably not that far off. Uh -huh. There's a cop behind us. All right, there's a cop behind us. That's all. There's nothing wrong. There's no problem. Well, now there is. What the fuck? Show me your hands. Now put your hands on top of your head and get out of the car. How do I get out with my hands on my head? Oh. Oh no. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you know why you're here? Yes, I'm willing to cooperate fully. I'll sign a statement or whatever makes this whole thing easier. Good. They haven't told you the charges, I take it. Did Stan try to stop you at any time? No. <sighs> why, is that a big deal? Aiden and a betting. What's gonna happen to Bill? Nothing. Unless he's convicted. Of course, if he is, we're going to run enough electricity through him to light up Birmingham. <sighs> Did he catch you with tuna fish? Is that how it started? When did you shoot him? What? What? <laughs> At what point did you shoot the clerk? I shot the clerk. Yes, when did you shoot him? I shot the clerk. <laughs> you think we're being booked for shoplifting, huh? No, no, you're being booked for shoplifting. I'm being booked for accessory to shoplifting. No. Aiden and a bitten. Aiden and a bitten. We think they're trying to set us up as Patsy's Ma. You know how corrupt <laughs> it is down here? They all know each other. It's like the clan's here. They're in bread. They sleep with their sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them do. Some of them do. Don't use any attorney. I think so. What? We got an attorney in the family. Great. Who? My cousin Vinny. Oh, hey. Movie title drop. Hey. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I love her. Oh, I love her. Yep. Me too. Yeah. In like <laughs> always, like. It feels like the wheels went out of balance right after we hit that mud. Nah, that's not it. You got mud in your tires. The mud gets around the inside of the wheel, throws the balance off. Mud in the tires? No. She never heard it. She knows everything about cars. Yep. Yeah, we're famous for our mud. Huh. Mm. 
This escalated quickly. Now our jail was condemned this morning. And that's why we're bringing you all out to the state correction. Okay, system. I was wondering. You know what happens in these places? Yeah, I know what happens in these places. And sometimes there's a big guy named Bubba no one wants <laughs> We got somebody for you. Oh my God. <laughs> you must be staying. How you doing? Mm. I don't want to do this. Hey, I don't blame you. If I was in your situation, I'd want to get through this whole thing as quickly. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this whole movie is just oops misunderstandings, huh? Mm -hmm. Make it a simple in and out procedure. In and out. Eek! I think you should be grateful. I think you should be down on your fucking knees. <laughs> Vinny. 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 Bag of donuts. <laughs> Bag of donuts? What? What kind of cases have you had? Assault and battery, armed robbery. You know. what, kind, what, kind, what kind of law do you practice? Well, up till now, uh, personal injury. Oh. Well, actually, this would be my first foray into the trial process. How long have you been practicing? Almost six weeks. Oh! Then you graduated from law school six years ago. What have you been doing since? Studying for the bar. Yeah. I didn't pass my first time out. A lot of people don't. That's fine. For me, six times was a charm. Oh! Well, you got there. <laughs> well, maybe at first you don't succeed. Try five more times. <laughs> How long have you been practicing? Oh, about uh, six, sixteen uh, years. Oh, no, don't lie. Because I want you to know that when it comes to procedure, I'm not a patient man. I expect you to know this information when you come into my courtroom. Right. Oh, well, okay, Dick. This is going to be great. Benny's first case. Hmm. What can I do to help? She also reminds me, I can never remember her name, but the girl from The Water Boy. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. Yay. Lumber meal. Y'all want some? Breakfast? You think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's too much. Even for Southern cooking, that's too much. It's gonna taste real good. You never heard of grits? I just actually never seen a grit before. A grit! <laughs> a singular grit! <laughs> it's just corn, sort of. What is a grit anyways? It's made out of corn. If you're okay with the texture, then you're good with grits. Mm. Because they don't have a flavor. <laughs> well, they can have flavor. When you add flavor, th flavorful things to them, they do. Oh! What a fun mustache! Oh, he's adorable! Oh, where is your tie? Oh, honey, what are you doing? Oh, no. First case, the people of the state of Alabama versus William Robert Gambini and Stanley Marcus Rothenstein. Steve. Rothenstein. <laughs> <laughs> my client said, what are you wearing? Next time you come into my courtroom, you will look loyally. Oh, boy. <laughs> they thought they were getting arrested for uh, shoplifting a can of tuna. What are you telling me? Did they plead not guilty? No, I, I'm just trying to explain. Oh, no. I don't want to hear explanations. <sighs> if I hear anything other than guilty or not guilty, you'll be in contempt. How do your clients plead? Not guilty. I think I get. <gasps> You're now in contempt of court. Not guilty. Bailiff, please take Mr. Gambini into custody. Yeah. <laughs> This is a learning process for a lot of people. So you think you know what you're doing? Yeah, I think I know what I'm doing. No. Because you didn't look like you knew what you were doing today in that courtroom. That's accurate. All right, there is one problem. We can't afford to keep bailing you. I tried hustling the money, but I got stiffed. Did you say you got stiffed? Hustling how? We doing pool? Yep. Pool and chicken. What else do you need, baby? Come on. Marissa told me. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. That's the trifecta. Pool, chicken, Rose Tomei. Oh, I know him. Ew, ew. Oh my God, he just deep throat that chicken? Okay, Bubba. I believe you and Lisa played a game of pool for $200, which she won. I'm here to collect. How about if I just kick your ass? Oh boy. Get my ass kicked to collect $200. Hmm. I could use a good ass kick, and I'll be very honest. <laughs> it's been a minute. If I was to kick the shit out of you, do I get the money? What happened? Rear-ended? No, I fell. Oh. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> Always, looking, <for laughs> Always looking. First, let me see the money. I have the money. All no. right, let me see it. Show it to me. I can get it. No. Get it. Then we'll fight. Did you fall in your place or somebody else's? My place. Shit. <laughs> You saw what happened in there. You want to stay with him after that? Shit, Stan, I don't want to fire him. I mean, he's family. Give him the chance. I think he could do a good job. No, you're wrong. He's just lowering the expectations of the entire courtroom. So he'll come in and sweep the leg. Okay. I like Yeah. <laughs> Did I do it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Proud of you. Is that a drip I hear? Does it ever occur to you it could be turned off and drip at the same time? Maybe you didn't twist it hard enough. <laughs> you will see that this particular model faucet requires a range of 10 to 16 foot pounds of torque. I routinely twist maximum allowable torqueage. Oh. I used a Craftsman Model 1019 Laboratory Edition Signature Series Torque Wrench. <gasps> How could you be sure that's accurate? Before the torque wrench was applied to the faucet handle, it had been calibrated by top members of the state and federal department of weights and measures <gasps> to be dead on balls accurate. Oh. Dead on balls accurate. It's an industry term. <laughs> Did they just have mm -hmm. argue foreplay? Mm hmm Whatever blows your skirt up. <laughs> I looked up and saw two young men run out from the sack of suds and jump into a green car and drive off like the dickens. Could you point them out for me, please, ma'am? Sitting right there. I, I don't think that that's accurate. I was making my breakfast. I saw them two boys go into the store. Then later I heard a gunshot. They was running out, got into the car, and drove off. Did he have his glasses on when he saw him? Calm down, Miss Lawyer. Listen, okay, I am building the case. All right. <laughs> yeah, they peeled away. Car was all over the road. Thank you, sir. But I know him too. I asked him if he did it, and he said, I shot the clerk. I shot the clerk. Question mark. Mr. Gambini, stand up. He gonna hold you in contempt again because you're wearing that damn coat. Now, didn't I tell you the next time you appear in my courtroom that you dress appropriately? You were serious about that? <laughs> Oh, honey, you are, you gotta, okay, come on. I was thrown in jail, twice. Hey, I know I was in jail. I don't need you to point it out to me, okay? Are you sure? <laughs> Encourage me a little bit, a little encouragement. Is that what you want? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, you were wonderful in there. <laughs> oh, you're a smooth talker, you are, you are. <laughs> oh, I love her. I'm really scared. You should be. I could win this thing, though. I know I could. I think that once you're out there and you're doing your thing out there, I think you're going to be really great. If you don't fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Can't escape it. What are we, next to the slaughterhouse? Or just a pig farm? Yep. I'm surprised you didn't smell that situation. My name is John Wait. Gibbons, and I'm um, an attorney in the public defender's office. Hi, John. Hey. I know him. Austin Pendleton. You've seen him in movies before. Well, he, he wants to go with the public defender. All right, I'm, I'm going with the public defender, too. Are you scared? Yeah. The DA's got to build a case. He wants to make a brick bunker of a building. He's going to show you the bricks. He showed them to you in a very special way. So that they appear to have everything a brick should have. You look at the bricks at the right angle. They're as thin as this playing card. His whole case is an illusion, a magic trick. It has to be an illusion, because you're innocent. Ah! <gasps> Let me question the first witness. All I ask is for that one chance. I think you should give it to me. He thinks you should give it to him? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, little Yankee boy, look here what I got. <laughs> How do I know that's not a bunch of ones with a 20 wrapped around? Yeah. Fan it out. Show it to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> man, he gonna wind this man up to the fact point where he will actually give him $200. Just to go away. <laughs> just to prove <laughs> that he got it. Oh, no. God! <laughs> 
Pippin said, I can't catch a, a mm. wink of sleep around here. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> Does that freight train come through at 5 a.m. every morning? No, sir. It's very unusual. The judge, this uh, Judge Malloy, he asked me to go to lunch with him. You'd be a good litigator. I never thought of becoming a lawyer. But this Judge Malloy, he was from Brooklyn, too. I mean, he did it. So, all of a sudden, it seemed possible. Hey, what are you doing this afternoon? You going hunting? Uh. <laughs> if only I knew what he knows, you know? If he let me look at his files. Oh, he's not going to do that, baby. You're gonna shoot a deer? I don't know. I suppose. Imagine you're a deer. You spot a little brook. You put your little deer lips down to the cool, clear water. Bam! A fucking bullet rips off part of your head. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> now I ask you, would you give a fuck what kind of pants a son of a bitch who shot you was wearing? <laughs> <laughs> she makes a very good point. I'd sure like to get a look at your files. Well, oh. can you Xerox all the files on the Gambini Rothenstein case for Mr. Gambini? Huh. I'm starting to finesse him, right? I got him going. He offers to have his secretary copy everything for me. What's this? You uh, reading this book? Don't you want to know why Trotter gave you his files? He has to. By law, you're entitled. It's called disclosure, you dickhead. Oh. <laughs> they didn't teach you that in law school either? Yeah, read the book, Vinny. <laughs> How many different levels of thickness have you gone through? What'd you have for breakfast? That brown stuff. <laughs> Very unusual. It is. Normally it comes through at four. Yesterday you told me that freight train hardly ever comes through here at 5 a.m. in the morning. I know. She's supposed to come through at 10 after four. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They have no record of any Vincent Gambini ever trying any case in the entire state of New York. 20 years ago, I became an actor. Anyway, I had to change my name. So now I practice law under my legally changed stage name. Gary Gary. Oh. He checks up on this guy. His name will show up all over the place. Mm, his name was in the papers all last week. Yeah, I saw that. But you didn't actually read the articles. Uh. No. It's too bad. Why is that? Is he dead? He's dead. They are. <sighs> Vinny, charisma can really only get you so far, my dude. You have to have some knowledge. I am in the dark here with all this legal crap. I have no idea what's going on. All I know is you're screwing up and I can't help. You lent me a little camera, didn't you? Mm. We agreed to get married as soon as you won your first case. My biological clock is ticking like this. <laughs> I ain't slept in five days. I got no money, a dress code problem, and a little murder case, not to mention your biological clock. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Really having a whole time, huh? Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Yep. They're famous for mud. You got places around here famous for the clay. Mm hmm. Oh, damn! Oh, boy. Was that his suit? What was in that pink plastic thing in the trunk? It's your suit. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I got you $200. <laughs> you gonna kick the shit out of me now? <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Are you mocking me with that outfit? Mocking you? No. I bought a suit. You've seen it. Now it's covered in mud. The only store you could buy a new suit in has got the flu. So I had to get this in a secondhand store. So I what? wore this ridiculous thing <laughs> for you. <laughs> You on drugs? Uh, what? Drugs? No, I don't take drugs. <laughs> now, we're gonna be asking you to return a verdict of murder in the first degree and a verdict of accessory to murder in the first degree for helping Gambini commit this hyenas crime. Hyenas? Oh my God! 
Uh, everything that guy just says, bullshit. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Counselor, your statement, sir. Well, now, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the. J j j oh no. He didn't. Um, Kill anyone. He, Are you he uh, um, <laughs> prosecution's case is circumstantial and 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 uh, <laughs> uh, oh my god, coincidental. Thank you. <laughs> it is the epitome of a shit show. That's it. What about everything we talked about? Well, I get a little nervous. A little there. nervous. <laughs> I've gotten better. I'm getting better. Uh, Tipton, I see you wear eyeglasses. Sometimes. Were you wearing them that day? No, they're reading glasses. <sighs> what color eyes the, 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 the defendants have? Brown. Brown. Mm. Hazel green. No more questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this is like a circus of incompetence. Kangaroo court. It's kangaroo court. So would you say you got a better shot at them going in and not so much coming out? You could say that. I did say that. Would you say that? Yeah. Is it possible the two Utes... Uh, uh, two what? Oh. Uh, did you say Utes? Yeah, two Utes. What is a Ute? <laughs> Excuse me, Your Honor. Two Utes. <laughs> you look very youthful today. Oh. Oh, that he said that earlier and I didn't understand. I get it now. So obviously it takes you five minutes to make breakfast. That's right. Uh, do you remember what you had? Eggs and grits. Eggs and grits. I like grits too. Instant grits? No self-respecting Southerner uses instant grits. Well, uh, it's okay. Pump the brakes there, pudding. All right. How could it take you five minutes to cook your grits when it takes the entire grit-eating world 20 <laughs> minutes? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Are we to believe that boiling water soaks into a grit faster in your kitchen than <laughs> any face and the face of Okay, your... Vinny. Okay. All right. I don't know. Were these magic grits? <laughs> I may have been mistaken. Okay. There we go. You're fired. <laughs> I stay in prison tonight. Maybe I'll finally get some sleep. Doing good, <laughs> huh? Nope. Nah. Okay, what's happening outside the prison? Oh, okay. I'm not turning down a chance to go to bed with Marissa Tomei. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What is this rusty, dusty, dirty looking thing over your window? It's a screen. And what are these really big things right in the middle of your view from the window of your kitchen to the sack of suds? Tree, tree, trees. Trees, that's right. Don't be afraid to shout them right out when you know. <laughs> What do you think? Is it possible you just saw two guys in a green convertible and not necessarily these two particular guys? Well, I suppose. I'm finished with this guy. I'm finished with this guy. <laughs> Mrs. Riley, when you saw the defendants, were you wearing your glasses? Yes, I was. Over here, dear. Uh-huh. How far were the defendants from you when you saw them entering the sack of sun? A hundred feet. A hundred feet. This is 50 feet. That's half the distance. How many fingers am I holding up? Let the record show that counsel is holding up two fingers. What? Bitch. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up now? Four. Oh, well, okay then. I'm a special automotive instructor of forensic studies for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I object to this witness being called at this time. We've been given no prior notice he'd testify, no discovery of any tests he's conducted or reports he's prepared, and as the court is aware, the defense is entitled to advance notice of any witness who will testify. Look at him! That is a lucid, intelligent, yes. well-thought-out objection. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Overruled. Oh. Oh, yeah, I forgot where we were. Sorry. <laughs> Tires belonging to the uh, defendant's car. Tire marks left by the assailant's car as it fled the convenience store. They're the same model and size tire. What kind of equipment did you use to find this out? I used a Hewlett Packard 5710A dual column gas chromatograph with flame analyzation detectors. Is that thing turbocharged? 
<laughs> Court will take a 60 minute recess for lunch. And Mr. Gambini, I'd like to speak to you in my chambers. Oh boy. I just faxed the clerk of New York and asked him what he knew about Jerry Gallo. And you want to know what he replied? Did you say Jerry Gallo? Gallo with the G? That's right. Jerry Gallo's dead. <laughs> I'm aware of that. <laughs> I'm Jerry Callo, C A L L O. <laughs> you didn't call back after three, unless by some miracle you happen to win this case in the next 90 minutes. Okay. Well, let's do that then. I got my pictures back. Can I help? We'll use your pictures. Uh, here's a good one of the tire marks. It's dog shit. I'm out of here. Mr. Gambini? Your first witness. My next witness is not in the courtroom right now. Please trace this. I need your help. I don't I need give a shit. Leave me alone. <sighs> <laughs> Ms. Mona Lisa Vito. This witness is an expert in the field of automobiles and is being called to rebut the testimony of George Wilbur. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you're supposed to be some kind of expert in automobiles, is that correct? Is that correct? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, I'm sorry. You don't get to be mad. People's lives are on the line. Well, in what way are you qualified? Well, my father was a mechanic. His father was a mechanic. My mother's father was a mechanic. My three brothers are mechanics. Four uncles on my father's side are mechanics. And Vito, your family's obviously qualified. Have you ever worked as a mechanic? Yeah, in my father's garage, yeah. As a mechanic. <laughs> What would the correct ignition timing be on a 1955 Bel Air Chevrolet with a 327 cubic inch engine and a full barrel carburetor? It is a trick question. Chevy didn't make a 327 in 55. The 327 didn't come out to 62. Oh. However, in 1964, the correct ignition timing would be four degrees before top dead center. Oh. Oh. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Acceptable. <laughs> She's acceptable. Kiss my ass. She's great. There is no way that <laughs> these tire marks were made by a 64 Buick Skylark. These marks were made by a 1963 Pontiac Tempest. Would you like me to explain? I would love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so would I. The car that made these two equal length tire marks had positive traction, which was not available on the 64 Buick Skylark. The 64 Skylark had a regular differential, which anyone who's been stuck in the mud in Alabama knows you step on the gas, one tire spins, the other tire does nothing. Oh, yeah, that's that, that's that. Everybody gets stuck in the mud at some point. Right tire would tilt out and ride along its edge, but that didn't happen here. The tire mark stayed flat and even this car had an independent rear suspension. In the 60s, there were only two other cars made in America that had positive traction and independent rear suspension and enough power to make these marks. One was the Corvette, which could never be confused with the Buick Skylark. <laughs> had the same body length, height, width, weight, wheelbase, and wheel track as the 64 Skylark, and that was the 1963 <laughs> Pontiac Tempest. Did you like uh, Ms. Vito's testimony? Very impressive. She's cute too, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Any way in the world, the Buick that the defendants were driving made those tire tracks. Actually, no. No. Okay. Okay. Your Honor, I call Sheriff Farley. I took it upon myself to check out if there was any information on a 63 Pontiac Tempest. The two boys who fit the defendant's description, were arrested two days ago in Jasper County, Georgia oh. for driving a stolen metallic mint green 1963 <laughs> with a white convertible mm -hmm. top. He's New Yorking over here. He's New Yorking over here. Is that it? No. A 357 Magnum revolver was found in their possession. Boom. The murder weapon. The defense rests. Oh. Yay! In light of Miss Vito's and Mr. Wilbur's testimony, the state like dismiss all charges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Order here. Oh. Have to get out of here by three. Make sure all the bags in the car. Okay? Benny, you get a trip. <laughs> Y'all got to leave. I got to get the hell out of here. If I don't get out of here now, I might never be able to leave. <laughs> Mr. Gambini. Oh, God. 
<laughs> I owe you an apology, sir. Oh. I'm honored to shake your hand. Oh. You're one hell of a trial lawyer. Oh. Apparently Callaway is somebody and... What the hell was that all about back there? I had a friend send a fax to the judge. <laughs> confirming the very impressive news that Jerry Callow. Yay! Friends, you got in the clerk's office. Your friend, Judge Malloy. Oh. You know, this could be a sign of things to come. You win all your cases, but with somebody else's help. And then afterwards, you have to go up to somebody and you have to say thank you. Oh my God, what a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I won my first case. You know what this means. Yeah, you think I'm going to marry you? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not going to marry me now? No way. You can't win a case by yourself. You fucking useless. <laughs> Oh, how many what? times did you say that spontaneous is romantic? <laughs> a, a burp is spontaneous. A burp is not romantic. <laughs> All right. So that was my cousin, Vinny. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Your overall thoughts? I mean, so that was a good time. I loved Marissa Tomei. Tomei. Same. Tomei. Yeah, I had a brain fart there. There was a lot of people that I like I know that I've seen them before yeah, a lot of character actors yeah so I was like oop I know you oop I know you oop I know you um so I will say this up front I have a little bit of a it's kind of hard for me to suspend disbelief with like misunderstanding kind of tropes if that makes any sense the miscommunication the miscommunication well, there was a lot of that there was a lot of it I, I like the one when uh Vinny went to meet them for the first time oh, in yeah, prison. In prison. He was like, you should be on your knees. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was funny. That was that was funny. But I have these... It's hard for me because I'm like, he's obviously not a Southern dude. He's in, like, street clothes. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, got yeah. A, un a New York accent. Like, come on, like, come on man. Holes. Like, Stop. I can't. I can't, though. <laughs> like... Terrible. So that was a little difficult for me to get in. And I don't know, some of the gags went a little too far. Like the them not being able to sleep and this, like, I think it just it just drug it out a little bit too long. Like it wasn't movie breaking or anything. It was just these are things that I noticed. Uh, but overall, I liked the premise. I liked all of the cast. I wanted to shake Vinny a lot, <laughs> like a lot, a lot. But I think that that's the point. You're supposed to be like frustrated with him. I enjoyed it, but I, I'm ready to get into notes. Uh, right. I feel like I need a little bit of got of direction all right uh do you have any experience or knowledge or of trials and courtroom procedures and things like that like do you have any knowledge to compare to what happened in the movie very very limited okay. like i i know the things like the arraignment and i know like there are certain ways that you have to that you're able to talk to uh witnesses and the judge can do these things and that things but a lot of the specific procedures I wasn't aware of but a few I was aware of more than Vinny was and that made me upset <laughs> and I was like I am a lay person you have to you have finally passed the bar <laughs> like, you should know this well the reason I ask is because uh, from what I've read this movie is very accurate to mm. what uh, happens in courtrooms and trials and as far as like procedures and like cross examinations and things like that and one of the reasons for that is because the director, Jonathan Lynn, has a law degree and wanted it to be as realistic as possible. Okay, okay. And uh, actually, I read that a lot of like lawyers, attorneys and stuff praise the movie for its actu uh, accurate depiction. Okay. And I've also read that it's actually been screened, like it's shown in law schools for proper courtroom procedures and like... Wow, okay. Dang. As an example of like how this, it's supposed to be Yeah. Done. Uh, the early part of the movie is how it's not supposed to be done. And then the latter part mm. is how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> Examples of both sides. Yeah, I actually read the the American Bar Association. They have a publication, a journal they put out, and they ranked this as the number three greatest legal movie oh, dang. of all time. Well, do you know the other two? I do not. Okay. <laughs> if you know, let us know. Yes, I would like to know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then speaking of the director wanting things to be like as realistic as possible, a lot of the things were lifted from like actual uh, 
courtroom transcriptions. Oh, okay. Like the whole part where uh, Trotter's talking to the FBI uh, expert and he talks about what he tested it in uh-huh. and asked if, does that thing come supercharged? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, that was verbatim from a, another trial. Yeah, because that, that was very much, I was like, oh man, we really getting super hyper technical. But I suppose that's the point is to showcase like, see, big fancy word names. This means it's it's official and it's legit. Here, yeah. dumb jury, you can understand that this means. <laughs> we use the latest and greatest technology, exactly. so it has to be accurate. It's got to be accurate. Which it was. Which it was. That's the thing. Like, just because you're right doesn't mean I'm wrong kind of situation. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, he would, took a lot of things from real life. Like, the whole misunderstanding between uh, Vinny and the judge about the two Utes. Oh, God, no. No. That was a real conversation that the director had with Joe Pesci because the director (laughs) is British and he had a hard time understanding Joe Pesci's New York accent. So he thought it was hilarious, so he put it in the movie. And it was. It's one of my favorite parts. Yeah. (laughs) Did you say Utes? (laughs) Yeah, the two Utes. Yeah. Oh, God. (laughs) Excuse me. Utes. (laughs) Uh, There were also some real moments that weren't planned that were oh. in the movie oh boy uh, when joe pesci Vinny was trying to explain like the names to judge haller and mm-hmm. knocks over his chest pieces oh. stuff. that was an accident <laughs> uh, i thought that was on purpose to like as a distraction no, technique I thought, okay. it, I thought it was funny so we left it in the movie it, it was, was funny he was right <laughs> uh, the first night they stay at the hunting cabin mm-hmm. and that owl was outside screeching mm-hmm. uh it was a owl they got they said they had it had very little prior training oh okay and uh they would feed it pieces of beef to get its mouth to open and then they added in the screeches in post-production okay. later but they said they got real lucky because it didn't fly away from the gunfire mm-hmm. and its reaction like turning its head and looking back <laughs> was like the natural reaction and like they got it on the first take oh wow okay now that is very lucky uh, let's see. Uh, speaking of other like real life facts and stuff, uh, the judge when he tells Vinny that he needs to know Alabama constitutional law, mm-hmm. like by the time he comes back into court, mm-hmm. that would be almost an impossible task mm-hmm. because the Alabama Constitution is the longest state constitution in the entire country. Wow, with over three hundred thousand words. Okay, that's and, and just to put that into wild. context, the U- United States Constitution just has a little over four thousand words. Okay, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And speaking of Alabama, they actually a lot of it was shot in Georgia. Okay. So, and Georgia's more of a filmmaker area than Alabama is. So that that tracks. Yeah, and that kind of it was also during like one of their hottest summers ever. And, but it kind of worked out because uh, they they basically re- reconstructed a warehouse for the courthouse, mm-hmm. like the interior shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a warehouse with temperatures getting over 100 degrees, mm-hmm. so it was super hot. But that kind of played into it, especially with like uh, the first public defender when he's doing his with opening the sweating, the yeah. sweating oh everywhere. Oh my gosh, I got a little nervous. A little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better. I'm getting better. <laughs> but also speaking of the authenticity or realistic procedures and things there was one that was not uh realistic and that was that first scene where Vinny meets them in prison yeah yeah they don't go to the cells yeah but it was originally deleted because of that uh-huh. but after watching it and reading it he it would have caused a continuity issue and he also, the director also said it would have been cutting like one of the funniest scenes yeah i mean so. it, that's one of those it's like it, it, initially, when that came, that was one of the reasons why I was like, what? <laughs> because, like, <laughs> they wouldn't go to the cell. But I was also like, oh, it's for the bit. Yeah, no, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I understand. Oh, okay. I'll allow it. Uh, could you see anybody else playing Vinny? <sighs> or if you had to pick another actor, can you imagine anybody else in the role? Sure. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm having a total brain fart. So anyways, I, wa- I started blasting. Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. <laughs> he was considered for the role. Uh, also, John Lovitz was considered for the role. Uh, but the reason I ask is because there was, according to uh, his biography, 
This was supposed to be a starring vehicle for Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> but it was after the commercial failure of Ford Fairlane, uh, he did not get the part. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, for those of you who haven't watched, we uh, we did in fact watch Ford Fairlane, and I was not a huge fan. So <laughs> I'm really happy that we went with Joe, because um, he's just got that energy. Like it's it's a good time. It's a good time. Oh, you one of the things you said you liked Marissa Tomei a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, me as well. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, but she actually won an Academy Award for this movie for Best Supporting Actress. Oh, wow. She did, no, that, she did such a good job, especially mm -hmm. the very end. I mean, I... Oh, her testimony? Yeah, like, was just fantastic. Um, I was a little upset with her because, you know, at first she was kind of like, mm, you know, like, play, like being standoffish, like, I'm not going to be a part of this, you know, this, this, I'm being petty. Uh, I was just, you know upset with that but it's okay she was young at the time she didn't right. know then that with great power comes great responsibility no just no no <laughs> <laughs> also it's a movie no i was making a bit you see i get it yeah uh-huh all that for the bit pippin's like mm -mm. <laughs> That's... he had to wake up to tell you how terrible yeah, you it know was. What? That's fair. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, I think that'll do it. I'm sorry. That's, uh, that's most of the notes I got. Is there anything else you want to talk about, or any favorite parts of the movie, or least favorite parts of the movie? It was kind of a, a bit of a throwaway thing, but it did tickle me. the the two thousand uh, two thousand the two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, that was just funny. The whole the whole situation. I, I appreciated the bits. I loved their costumes. I loved uh, Vinny and Lisa's ensembles. Oh, Mr. Gambini, you mocking me with <laughs> that outfit? Are you mocking me? Am I mocking what? you, Judge? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Are you on drugs? Overall, I enjoyed this. All right. Yeah. Well, let's give it a rating. Okay. What's yours? Um, I will give this one a 7.7. 7. Uh, okay. Yeah. Eight for me. Okay. I enjoy right. this movie a lot. I've seen it a lot of times. It's one of those that if it is on, I will stop and watch the whole thing. Like, it's it's in that category for me. Okay, damn. I enjoyed it a lot. All right. Pippin, what would you rate it? Ten Gambinis? <laughs> All right, I like that. <laughs> says, oh, I, I, I think I might have to go. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to go on that one? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That would be... I would deserve that. <laughs> okay. All right. So, 7.78... 10 Gambinis. You really going to town on me, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what did y'all think? What would you rate it? Do you have any tidbits, behind the scenes information? What are some suggestions that you might have based on our reactions? If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like the video. And if you haven't already, we'd greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. Pippin loves it too. Mm -hmm. Every sub is like a scritch behind the ears for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's going to be all from us. You guys, take care. We will see you next time with another first time. Bye. Oh, you done now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Put it away. <laughs>